So here we are in the city of Brooklyn Center going down Shingle Creek Parkway. And I'm heading into work on Sunday afternoon. And here's the Ruder, Martin J. Ruder bus garage where I drive my bus out of. So we'll take you into work here and show you what I do. I kind of got this idea from my paternal cousin Ted Decker. He told me he always wanted to be a bus driver. There's one of our big articulated 60 foot buses. And yes, I've driven them before. We pull around to the back of the lot here. That's where uh, the employee parking lot is. And uh, we'll get everything going here. Okay, here we are at the garage at Twin Cities Metro Transit Public Transportation Garage in Brooklyn Center. And there's the employee door that I go in every single day. And here we are coming inside the garage. There's the dispatcher windows over there where we are assigned our buses. And up here is all the routes, with maps of the routes, and the detours may currently be in effect. And below that is where all the bus schedules are for all the bus routes that are out of this garage. This is one of the smaller garages. Here's the driver's room in general, where we wait around to go out if we're on call and where our lockers are for our uniforms and whatever else even have cable TV to wash if we want and vending machines and a fridge for food bathrooms etc etc well now we'll go out and take a look at the bus alright now we're gonna go out to my bus and I'll show you what what it's like to be a bus driver Come on. been assigned bus 683 today. We get our buses assigned pretty much randomly every day. So here we have a, a Metro Transit 40-foot Gillig bus. These are the pretty much the standard for the whole system. They're 10-foot uh, 2 inches high, 8-foot 6 inches wide, and 40 feet long. They'll seat 44 passengers and probably carry another 25 standing, maybe 30 if you really pack them in tight. And they weigh 15 tons, empty. Now for all you techie guys, we'll go around back and I'll show you the engine. But okay, our engines are in the rear. We just open the engine compartment right here. And there we have the engine. It's not going to be easy to get a good shot of the uh, engine in here, but uh, I can tell you a little bit about it. They're uh, 275 horsepower Detroit four-cylinder turbocharged diesels. Can you imagine that? Four cylinders, that's right. Just, just a four-banger. It's a big four banger though. And I'm trying to get the best shots I can because they cram that thing in there pretty tight. And we got our gauges here in the back for temperature. And we also have a rear start back there. In case something happens, we can't start the bus up front. All right. So we've seen the back. We'll take you inside. Actually, I'll 
I'll show you all the pre-check I have to do to set up my bus before I go out and pick up the passengers. Public safety, you know. That's our business. Come on in. All right, here I am in the driver's seat. All our bus work is shown on our paddle board. This is our paddle board. Can you get a shot of this? This is our whole work. I'm on the Route 10, the Grand Central bus. Actually, it's not Grand anymore. It's just Central. And uh, this is my, my time that I leave the garage. It's uh, 5.03. I come in at 12.22 in the morning. I go up to Northtown Shopping Mall, and then it goes this way. And these are all my checkpoints along the route. All the way. This is a seven hour piece of work, but I still get paid for eight because it's a union job. So, um, the majority of the time during the week, it's uh, eight hours. So, anyway, we usually keep our, our work there. And I'll put the schedules up. Well, he'll give you a little shot of the controls here. So, why don't you come closer and uh, we'll show you the controls of the bus not a whole lot it's not real complicated got our automatic transmission there there uh, most of them are Allison transmissions there's a few that have a voice transmission otherwise air pressure and uh, just speedometer and the basic controls here and we have to do this pre-trip inspection which I told you about before so the first thing that involves is we go out and we check our tires with the hammer so you come follow me on the bus while well, I check the tires. Need an eight ounce hammer or better. And oh, I gotta turn on the forward. Check all, check all the lights, make sure they work. So we hit the bus tire. And we listen for a nice sound of, like a full balloon, I guess. If a tire is flat, it'll make a, a just a thump, a flat thump. It won't have any, uh, won't sound like there's any pressure in there. Two tires in the rear. I'm also checking my, my turn signal. You gotta keep up. Just finishing off the 22 line. Air nice and full. And I'm still checking all my lights. And I check my overhead sign. It says not in service because I haven't started yet. Alright, we also have a side sign for the passengers. And you can come back in. And even though it's kind of sideways, that's a shot of the left floor of the bus. The button on the left and the right, those are our turn signals. We step on them to run the turn signals. The center one's a high beam switch. Otherwise, everything else is pretty basic. Got the gas pedal there on the left or on the right, and the brake pedal on the on the left. And then over here, we have our fare box. And uh, I have to log into the fare box and put in all this information. And uh, I'll uh, do that now. All right. First thing we set is our bus fare, which is our basic fare, is a dollar twenty-five. It goes to 175 during rush hour. Let me push our direction north, south, east, or west. The route we're on, number 10, which I'm on. Our run number, everything goes by run number. That's uh, the way they kind of track us through the computer system. Trip numbers, uh, it depends on uh, what's written on the paddle board. These little numbers up above are our trip number. And then we put in our driver number, and mine is... Uh, 8849 and the fare box is now set 
and ready to accept cash fares. Over here is where our transfers come out. And that one didn't work very well. And neither did that one. Apparently we don't have enough juice here on this bus to uh, to get the transfers out good, so we'll have to start her up. All right. This over here is our radio. A good shot of our radio. This is the new radio system. We've had it less than a year. Can you get the screen here and everything? Mm -hmm. And before we had this system, this used to be a halfway decent job. But this we call Big Brother. Because using satellite tracking, they know exactly where we are and what time we're there and the whole works. So if we're running a minute early, they know it and they call us on the radio and yell at us and write us a violation. Or if we're running more than 10 minutes late, they do the same thing, only it's not as bad. This is easier to log into. I just punch in my, my number and my, my uh, run number. But, and I hit send. But I don't think it's going to work because they put in a new thing if you try and log in. See, it says log in tonight. If you try and log in 20 minutes before we our scheduled pullout time, it won't let us. Something about they don't want to get confused down there at the, uh, at the uh, bus garage. So let's see now if we have more juice to get out of transfer so I can show you. Yes, well, let's try one more. Yeah, we don't have very good ink, but this is our transfer right here. If you can read that, it shows the bus number, the time of day, the date, the type of transfer, the route, the direction, and what what time it expires. We get two and a half hours on our transfers. You can ride as many buses as you want in that amount of time. And when you get on the bus and you have a transfer, you just stick it back in here, and it registers the transfer. Cash fares go here, uh, coins, and then dollar bills go here. And uh, I guess that pretty much takes care of uh, the fare box. And up here we have our destination sign. This is how we set the sign. Uh, they allow us two destinations. I'll just punch in my northbound destination and my southbound destination. And now the overhead sign out there will be correct. Oh, you can get a shot of the back through all the way to the back of the bus here. But I gotta check everything out. I think here's our bus schedules. They go up here. People can help themselves to the schedules. And then up here, we have bus cameras to keep an eye on the passengers. That was the, one of the best inventions they ever had in the company, was to uh, get the uh, cameras. That, and there's a videotape function where uh, for 20, it holds it for 24 hours before the tape recycles and erases. All right, then we have the old Bostrom air ride seat here. So while you're all sitting on the hard seats, I got a nice air cushion seat to protect my back from injury when I'm driving along. Oh, one thing I almost forgot to check here before I left is our wheelchair lift. All of our buses are, are accessible to the disability community. And so we have to test the lifts, and now you get to see how we board a wheelchair. They'll be waiting out there in the bus stop, and we just deploy our lift like this. Getting all the lift. 
pressure to pan to get all the lift. <laughs> then they then they come on to the ramp. And once they're on and they say they're they're on, or I can see they're on, and we bring them up. Then they come off the lift. I strap them in back there. There's a spot for them with seat belts and everything, and some of the seats fold up for them. And then I stole the lift. Other things you might be interested in, in uh, an average eight hour day will go about a hundred miles, a little more, a little less. I'd guess and probably carry maybe I don't know, maybe 400 people a day on my bus. The full system, they carry about 250,000 people daily. That includes Minneapolis, St. Paul, and all the first ring suburbs of the service. Um, the picks, we, the drivers have picks. They run anywhere from 12 to 16 weeks, generally. and. Uh, you either pick work or you pick to be an extra driver, extra board, or you are pretty much fill in or go out on for drivers who are on vacation. Uh, I've been doing this about 15 years, and uh, other than Big Brother here, it's not a bad job. You get to socialize with a lot of people and get on the bus. Uh, some of our routes do take the freeway. Those are usually the big Arctics that bend in the middle, the 60-foot buses. I don't drive them too much, but I have driven them before. But I guess the uh, best thing to do would be to take you for a short little ride. So we'll show you what it's like to uh, actually be a passenger and ride with one of our buses. Thanks, bye. And there you have it, the bike of the Metro Transit bus driver.